morning everybody welcome back to another film so I'm walking quietly trying not to stand on branches because the woodland is absolutely silent there is the distant hum of the motorway but it's hard to escape that where I live in Lancashire there's just the odd sound of the occasional foraging blue tip but apart from that there's nothing and I'm sure there'll be roe deer not far from here this part of the woodland usually has roe deer in it because it is off the beaten track but I love this place it's so it's so nice to come to and it's quite close to home and uh, I've produced many films in this wood so as usual I've come with no expectations today but one of the things I did want to do was to try and observe the changing of the summer season through to autumn and maybe try and get photographs that that reflect that and I've actually brought which I've never brought before a set of extension tubes today and it'll be interesting to see if I can get anything uh, with those but anything's on the table as normal just watch where I'm walking there's a few branches there just some deadfall one snap of those and you've disturbed everything within 300 meters but yeah anything's on the table today but I always find that that initial walk especially early in the morning through the woods really gets me into that creative space and helps me see things more clearly things that I would ordinarily walk past if I was going at pace or if I'd only just walked into the woods I find that 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 quiet time initially when I first enter the woods is, is really special and important to how the rest of the photographic um, excursion let's say outing goes but I'm feeling it a little bit this morning because like I say the, the season is changing and that's always a great time for photography so Let's see what I can find. It's funny how we always consider it to be a sad thing when we see a tree that's gone over. And in this instance, it, it is, to be fair, one of the plantation trees, of which there are many in this woodland. But it's not always a bad thing when you see and you see a great tree that's finally gone over um, through wind or through decay the end of its life but in this woodland there's a complete lack of areas of water now when a tree goes over when they take the root system with it they often leave a depression in this case I would say it's about half a meter deep and in the bottom here it's only just dried out and we've had a really as you know a really dry summer so this here has actually served the purpose as a small pond within an area where there's no other water bodies so lots of birds and other wildlife will have been coming here to drink right throughout the summer season during the drought so like I say although it's quite sad to see these things go over everything seems to serve a purpose in the woods so maybe bear that in mind the next time you see a tree on its end So I've got my first shot, the most unlikely looking shot, and certainly not what I was expecting today. I was, um, as I said earlier on in the film, I was expecting to do images that, that represented the change from summer 
to autumn but you never predict what uh, what you might find on a walk and I'll just show you what I've got the camera set up on like I say quite unlikely uh, looking subject matter but um, within this pool are some beautiful colours and what I've done is I've taken two compositions um, essentially uh, one has included the two leaves by the by the leg there just above the leg and one of uh, just the colours on their own with no leaves I did find that the the beech leaves I wasn't sure comfortable that they actually produced a nice looking composition but for those of you that are interested this um, that you see here you'll, you'll have seen it before and it's a similar thing that you get on beaches when you've got rough seas and you get the foam what this is is that as the as the leaves and, and other debris fall down into the rivers it starts decaying and starts a process um, that mixes with the water and I'll try and explain it as best I can as, as the water becomes turbulent and uh, the, there's, the bubbles sort of build and they mix with the air and that's when these um, these areas of foam start to form and the colours that you see in the foam is essentially the, the decaying matter that, that produced these brown tones within, within the lighter colours and they can make for really beautiful images now they're not easy to get to and I would like to show you the composition and, and me taking it but the problem is the minute I step anywhere around here it creates an outfall and the foam starts to run away and uh, it, it changes the composition so I've had to delicately um, get in there and set the composition up I've taken the two images, one's on a 45 to 85 and one, this one here is a 100mm macro both shots are at f16 and I'll just show you um, I've had to do a focus stack because if you look at the back of the camera, the angle of the camera is not parallel to the water surface. So what I've done is I've done a stack of four, starting at the far end of the frame, the top end of the frame, and then focusing all the way through until I get to the bottom of the frame, um, ensuring that all the bubbles are lovely and sharp on each and every one. And it's really crucial that you don't move an absolute muscle between the shots because those bubbles will shift really really easily I think it makes for a nice image it's one of those where I'm I'm sort of a little bit on the fence but I'm pretty sure on the big screen it'll look really impressive especially when you're getting close and you see all those fine details of those bubbles so I'll put that on now So this scene was irresistible as I walked past it, although even with the best will in the world it was never going to look as good as it could in more atmospheric conditions. The composition is a real treat for the eye and I adore the way the light bleeds through from behind, but in terms of my scoring system as discussed in my last video, this one barely scores a 3 in my view. Now I have to apologise that in the next sequence I do have some issues with sound and focusing, so please bear with me. What a great little find. So this is 
a lovely mature beech tree that's obviously fallen down and by default beech trees have got a great shape about the branches in the upper canopy and we've got all that available here today to make a great composition and it's just begging to be photographed. I don't think the conditions are right today which is often the case when you find these things it's it's rare that you just stumble on you know the, the great composition in the great conditions so I'm definitely going to come back to this one I've got to find out where exactly in the wood I am because I have no idea at this moment in time so I'm going to take a shot with my my phone that'll, that'll log the location at least I know I can come back to it but what I like about it at the moment is the fact that the canopy is open and so obviously the tree's still alive and it's creating this lovely secretive feel to the to the shot and you've got this tunnel that goes through um, to the lighter woodland where the sun's coming down on the woodland floor beyond and it's just got that nice secretive feel that I like about it hopefully I can get back here before the leaves drop um, in a period when we've got some mist or fog and it might even look nice this image with frost and snow but the trouble with that is it's that the leaves will almost certainly have gone by then and it might just not have that same appearance that it has now it's got a lovely it's hard to explain like a mystical appearance looking through beyond the branches I'm going to put the camera up against the back of the LCD on this now and just talk you through the composition because it's almost impossible to see it from where the video camera is set and I need you to be able to look through the camera this camera um, unfortunately doesn't video very very well at all so it's, it's better just to show you through the LCD at the back so I'll do that now So the key elements to the image to the framing is this sweeping branch uh, on the right hand side and how it meets with this one above that joins the main limb of the tree and that creates this beautiful circular shape to the foot um, to the to the start of the frame. Now going back further through the frame, this branch here, this limb, and the one that's further back through the camera, they actually look like the closer together the perspective has been compressed and they form this nice secondary hole for you to look through and that also comes into play with this limb here which helps to to complete the circle and as I said before your eyes then drawn through the whole scene to the woodland beyond and what I'm going to do just to enhance that I'm going to just just bring the tones down of the um, of the outer frame ever so slightly just to really help you focus on on your eye traveling through these beautiful structures of the uh, of the branches like I said today's not really the day for it necessarily but um, it's a great one to come back to and uh, certainly a good one to show the composition on, on how it's how it's framed and put together Lens wise I've got um, a 28 to 45 mil and I'm on f8 because I want to try and soften the woodland beyond and I'm focusing round about midway between that limb and the second limb here. So I'll put that image on now. This next image <laughs> uh, had me at my wits end almost. I wanted to get a shot, like I said, that sort of celebrated the onset of autumn and the transition from summer to autumn. And I did think that I would use my um, extension tubes to get the sort of shot that I wanted. And what I had in my mind's eye was some sort of plant um, quite close up not on the ground um, but hanging as I've found just here but getting the positioning right and the 
angle on the shot right is just incredibly difficult uh, this magnification the fine tuning is just out of this world it really is so here's the camera and here is what I've been photographing so this is a Rowan mountain ash otherwise known and I just loved the way that these leaves curled around oh, you can see they're coming into focus hopefully they are yeah just love the way that they curled around each other and I've been trying so hard to get the angle just right <laughs> my pack is killing me I've been stooped over but um, <laughs> annoyingly where I've been stood just here the branches that are down at the back of the tripod are connected to the tree to the um, sorry to the uh, leaf so I had to stand incredibly still to try and get what I wanted um, to get it sharp because every time I just moved ever so slightly the whole tree and it's a big long branch and it takes ages to settle down and there's also a bit of wind which isn't helping and then I've had to battle with the occasional sunshine and what I really wanted was nice subdued light now if you look again at the leaves the leaf leaflets you'll see that the different shades of almost yellow to brown and what I wanted I wanted something that had mood and so what I've done is I've underexposed the image quite significantly just to pick up the highlighted sections and really create some mystery to the shot. One of the hardest ones I've, I've photographed for a while, it's ridiculous, something so small can be so challenging. But in the end I took the uh, extension tubes off and I've gone with just the, uh, the macro lens and it's on a vertical composition, aperture wise. I'm on f11 I started on f4.5 and um, when I when I reviewed the image when I did get a sharp one there were just not enough um, crisp sections of the leaf there, there were too much out of focus and not enough in and I'm trying to get the leaf edges the the, the fine um, serrated edges to be sharp in more than one place really not easy so I'll show you quickly on the back of the camera now um, I'll have to be quick because it moves around quite a lot and hopefully I can get in there um, without too much too much of a fuss. So there we have the shot really quickly. I can't believe it's still. I am actually going to take another one quickly while I can because it's not very often it's that still. So you can see there quickly before it goes off that it was underexposed and I uh, was just catching the, uh, the highlights of these individual ones which is what gives it that nice mood hopefully that is sharp and you can see it but um, incredibly difficult to get the arrangement of the turns just right you'd think it'd be straightforward but it, it really wasn't easy at all so I'll put that image on now Well that's it from me for today folks, uh, images to come in just a second, it was a bit of a mixed bag the images today I felt, not what I was expecting, uh, I did think that I would find more in the way of autumnal um, shots but uh, only found the one in the end and even then I didn't use the extension tubes which I was thinking I might get to use today. Uh, nice first image I felt, something a little bit unusual and then the um, the oak tree in the middle there which was more of a scouting type of shot but nonetheless something worthwhile talking about and certainly something worthwhile coming back to for me in the future 
So if you've enjoyed the video as always, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Leave some comments below, let me know what you think of today's images and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.